This is a walkthrough of problem three on exam one of module one in the book Problem Solving Guide for Mechanics in Thermodynamics. Problem three, a model rocket is fired vertically. The engine burns for a half a second. During the burn, the acceleration of the rocket is 40 meters per second every second upwards. Plot acceleration versus time, the speed versus time, and the height versus time for the entire flight of the rocket. The graph should be clearly labeled. The time to reach the peak, the maximum height, and the total time of flight should be discernible from the graph. I'll start with the good diagram. Let's put the rocket on the ground. Here's the rocket. Now let's think. You have to be careful here because the acceleration of the rocket over the flight is not constant. It changes. So you have to be careful not to use an equation that's only good for constant acceleration. So we're going to separate the flight into two parts. You can't use a single equation for the entire flight. The first part is the burn. The acceleration is a constant 40 meters per second squared upward. The second we'll call the coast. The engine's not burning anymore. The rocket's in free fall. The acceleration is constant, 10 meters per second squared, downward. We start with the burn. The rocket accelerates at 40 meters per second every second for a half a second during the burn. How high is the rocket at the end of the burn? You have to be careful here. Students who are sloppy get the wrong answer. You might want to pause the video and try, try to get the height of the rocket after the burn. Let's do this carefully and methodically. The rocket accelerates 40 meters per second squared for half a second. Its speed at the end of the burn will be 20 meters per second. If it starts from rest and it accelerates to a speed of 20 meters per second, at a constant rate, its average speed, the average of 0 and 20, is 10 meters per second. If it averages 10 meters per second for a half a second, it goes 5 meters. So the rocket's 5 meters off the ground at the end of the burn. And there it is. Let's put it on the diagram. We also can put the speed at the end of the burn 20 meters per second. So that's the burn. Now we can focus on the coast. The rocket's flying upward but slowing down under the influence of gravity. During the coast, the acceleration is 10 meters per second every second downward. The speed of the rocket at the end of the burn, which is the beginning of the coast, is 20 meters per second. It's going to take gravity two seconds to suck off that speed because gravity takes off 10 meters per second each second. So the rocket's going from 20 meters per second to a stop its average speed is 10 meters per second. The coast upward is two seconds long. If it averages 10 meters per second for two seconds, it's going to go 20 meters. If this is a little fast, you can stop at any time and back up with the video. So let's add this distance to the diagram. There it is. The coast is 20 meters. The burn is 5 meters. Now we can get the maximum height of the rocket just by adding those two. 5 meters upward during the burn, 20 meters upward during the coast. Maximum height is 25 meters. We can put that on the diagram as well. So we have the upward flight. Now we consider the downward coast. The rocket starts at rest at the peak. It stopped at the peak instantaneously. Gravity has it. It's accelerating downward 10 meters per second every second. And it's 25 meters off the ground, so it's going to accelerate 10 meters per second every second for 25 meters. How do we get the time for the downward flight? That's a good question. Let's guess. I'm guessing two seconds. Okay, now I got to think. Starts at rest, falls for two seconds. Under the influence of gravity, it's going 20 meters per second. Starts at rest, gets up to 20 meters per second. The average speed is 10 meters per second. If it averages 10 meters per second for two seconds, it goes 20 meters. It has to fall 25 meters. 
So it's going to be 5 meters off the ground still. It's got to be more than 2 seconds. 2 seconds is a little bit small. If we try 3 seconds, if it falls for 3 seconds from rest, goes from 0 to 30 meters per second, averages 15 meters per second. If it averages 15 meters per second for 3 seconds, it's going to go 45 meters. So 3 is way too big. Got to be a bit bigger than 2. Then we're happy. Looks like we're going to have to use an equation. This one's a good one because it doesn't have the final speed. We don't know the final speed. We don't know the impact speed with the ground. This equation doesn't have the final speed in it. If we plug in the numbers, it goes down 25 meters. The acceleration is minus 10 meters per second squared. The initial speed is zero. Remember, this is only the downward flight. One half times minus 10 is minus five. We can divide both sides by minus five and take the square root to get the time. So t is the square root of five seconds, which is 2.24, and we are happy with that. We knew it was gonna be close to that. The downward coast takes 2.24 seconds. Now we can get the total time of flight. The upward flight, we know, is 2.5 seconds. Two seconds for the coast, half a second for the bird. So the total time of flight, 4.74 seconds. If the downward coast takes 2.24 seconds, remember gravity increases the speed by 10 meters per second every second. If it starts from rest and accelerates at 10 meters per second squared for 2.24 seconds, it's going to be up to 22.4 meters per second. So now we're ready to produce the graphs. The acceleration is a constant plus 40 meters per second over the first half a second and a constant minus 10 over the entire remainder of the flight. So there's that graph. Minus 40, minus 40, minus 40, zoom. Engine cuts out, gravity has it, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, hits the ground here. Now the velocity versus time. The speed grows from 0 to 20 meters per second over the first half second during the burn, then changes by 10 meters per second every second in the downward direction. So let me ask you a question. What's the velocity of the rocket four seconds after it's launched? Four seconds after it's launched, that's three and a half seconds of coast, half second of burn. So we can consider the coast only. Gravity has it for three and a half seconds, and it started at 20 meters per second. The coast started, it was going 20 meters per second. Gravity takes off 10 meters per second every second. It was in the air coasting for three and a half seconds. Gravity takes off 35 meters per second, started at plus 20, must be going downward at 15, 15 meters per second downward. So we can check that out when we look at the plot. So there's the plot of this velocity. Rapid acceleration, the slope of this line is 40 meters per second squared. The slope of this line is minus 10 meters per second squared. The slope of the velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. So it reaches a speed of 20 meters per second when the burn ends at two and a half seconds right here the speed is zero that's what it should be when it hits the ground at about 4.74 seconds the speed is 22.4 looks like it's about right and the point we checked at four seconds should be minus 15 and there it is okay we don't even have to look at the key we know we got it right now the height you have to be careful here the rocket has a speed of zero at t equals zero and at t equals 2.5 seconds, the start and the peak. The slope of the height versus time graph is the speed, so the slope has to be zero at these two points. The tangent has to be horizontal, zero slope. Further, it's concave upward, accelerating during the burn, concave downward, decelerating during the coast. It should peak at 25 meters at two and a half seconds. And at the end, it should have a height of zero at 4.74 seconds. That's when it lands. Here it is. So the slope at the beginning is zero. The slope at the peak is zero. The peak is two and a half seconds at 25 meters. And it hits at about 4.75 seconds, 4.74. You think you're done, huh?
Nope, there's more. What is the slope of the line at one second? This point right here. What is the slope of the line? The height is 13.75 meters, but we want the slope. First, let's calculate it from physics. Let me see, at half a second, it's going 20 meters per second after the burn. It coasts for a half a second. Gravity takes off 10 meters per second every second. Started at 20, coasted for a half a second. Gravity takes off 5 meters per second. It's got to be going 15 meters per second. The speed here should be 15 meters per second at one second. Let's draw the tangent line. There's the tangent line. Now we can get the slope of the tangent line. The slope is the rise over the run. What's the rise? We like to use a big triangle. Let's use the whole thing. It's easy. The rise is 30 meters. So here's our triangle. There's the hypotenuse. There's the run. There's the rise. The rise is 30 meters. The run is right here. Looks like it's a little bit above zero and about the same amount above two. So that's two seconds. The run is two seconds. 30 meters divided by two seconds is 50 meters per second, which is what we got from the physics. So everything seems to be consistent.